Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me again. And I just have a video on the multiple grand cross that put out a few days ago. And this is the second part where we are talking about the full moon in Aquarius. And in this particular day, we have a fixed grand cross. Also with a very particular T-square. While my last video, I was talking about that mutable grand cross is more like a preparation for us to, to come into this Aquarius full moon with this particular energy. And today we are looking at something really special. I hope you follow me through. So, on the 19th of August or the 18th, depend, depends on where you at, we have the Aquarius full moon with moon at 25 degree in Aquarius, opposite the Sun, Mercury, and Vesta. At the same degree, 27 degree in Leo. Then our cross finish with Pallas Athena in Scorpio, opposite Uranus in Taurus. As if it is not even enough, we have a T square, square of Saturn in retrograde, 17 degree to Jupiter and Mars in Gemini at 17 and 19 degrees, squaring Venus in Virgo at 17 degree, opposite Saturn. And I have already mentioned in previous video of this between Saturn in retrograde in Pisces with Venus. And to connect with Galactic Astrology, I would like to share with you the mythology story, a karmic connection between Pallas Athena in Scorpio, opposite Uranus in Taurus, that Uranus in Taurus is conjunct with Algor. The Medusa story and all started also with Alice Athena and that is the part I would enjoy more to talk with you. In that particular day we can see we actually have Mercury, Kazemi and Bester all at the same point. That give even more potent energy of this Mercury as him because he is also retrograding. Let's look at it. So Mercury was in Virgo just at the beginning of August and then he goes retrograde to back to, to Leo on the 15th. Now he is having his Kazemi and ignite his energy, but in retrograde. I think if in my last video, when I talk about the mutable cross, that was an invitation thing before we speak, and here, this emphasize is even more important that before we communicate, we think not twice until we are extremely sure what information, what communication we want to convey outwardly. We've other people 
And together with that, we have vaster, vaster, claim holder, righteousness of this sacred energy connecting our mm, sacral chakra to feel deeply into our body, into our emotion, what is right to do? Is that only for an individual benefit or for a greater whole? Master, always talking about for greater whole, the flame that illuminates if what we want to convey is highly individualized maybe maybe time that we consider it in a deeper level with mercury retrograde while it's opposite opposite the moon in aquarius the moon in aquarius has this particular Based now nuance that as much as Aquarius is almost like a rebellious, um, a path of finder energy in it. When we have moon here. is an energy of inviting us to step back. Who has moon in Aquarius? Usually are people that regardless that he or she may want to share it outwardly, but this person also needs time to go retreat, go inward go into the deeper inner world to replenish, to regenerate energy. And that opposition is even more emphasized here with Mercury retrograde using the moon in Aquarius. While Saturn squaring Jupiter in Mars, the invitation to not act too fast. We might have thousand ideas. We don't need to go everywhere at the same time. We have so many ideas. Sit back, consider, discern which is the better option which direction is more appropriate before we act with Mars. And it's highly important, whatever that we act, we are looking at energy of creativity, of love, through Venus, Virgo, analytical, logical mind do not get too much overly acting with Jupiter Mars as much as Jupiter can bring us so much expansion that with such an in retrograde an invitation to hold back and because it is a fixed energy which is very hard to move differently and that emphasize even more our capacity as an individual to hold what is surrounding us, to draw it inward, hold it inward before we letting out. 
and with this, the other two points of this um, X cross, we have Alus, Athena, Scorpio, and Uranus in Taurus. That bring us into the astrology of Uranus conjunct Auro. Okay. The story of Auro, which I have already mentioned in another video, but I have never really talked about how it it also started connection, this karmic entanglement in the Olympian in Greek mythology. So, Pallas Athena, as the goddess of righteousness, a feminine glory, the favorite child of Zeus. And while she represents with this goddess energy of invincibility, that she is very potent, the goddess of Athena, and hence her name, Pallas Athena, that she is fearless, she is righteous, and she she goes into wars to, to defend what is truth, what is right, and she has this power in punishing or giving reward. The story goes that Algo, Medusa, before she became a Medusa, a monster, she was one of those maiden, virgin, that has her vow to be the goddess of a temple, Pallas Athena temple. But here comes Poseidon very potent god was entranced in love with the beauty of this maiden. Story goes that he he might seduce her instead of saying that was a violation, a sexual abuse or a rape. So she has broken her vow not under her own will. She was violated. When Pallas Athena found this out, or maybe she found it out on the scene, while Poseidon as a god go back to his place and be a god forever, Pallas Athena leashed it out her anger towards the unfortunate maiden and turned her from a beautiful woman, a beautiful maiden, into a monster with her hairs turning into snakes and with her eyes everyone that looked her in the eyes would turn to stone and that's how she become a monster but the fact that i think while palace athena is highly evaluated as a goddess which i think she has these statues but that isn't even the only time we know she leashed out her punishment without 
really considered the circumstances. Before that, she is a great friend with Cherico, the wife of Chiron. And Cherico has a son. The story goes that one day, her son, Tiresias, by mistakes, he came upon both Pallas Athena and Cherico bathing naked by the river. As a goddess, Pallas Athena should not be looked by another man or an immortal. Regardless, he is the son of Cherico, a good friend of her. As a punishment, she, he, she, as a punishment, she take away her his vision. Tiresias become blind, <laughs> and Jericho was saying, "What is wrong with you? Is this my son?" And Pallas Athena, and then was feeling a little bit guilty, and so instead, of, but she, but she cannot take back. Her punishment, and, and 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 instead of giving back his vision, he gave him the capacity of seeing future. That how Tiresias become a prophet. So, in this Olympian story, where a lot of unjust punishment. Are being laid to people that are virtually innocent, not of their own guilt, and this karmic entanglement between Pallas Athena, now opposite Argo, conjunct Uranus. Is that an invitation for us to look back into our own? wound. It's a time for us to reclaim our innocence, to redeem the, 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 the wounds, the pain, the suffering that we have endured so that we can transmute all these karmic ancient entanglements of punishment of suffering and to be free that our goal reclaim her purity of her rightful position and whoever that is in a position of control of punishment should they be more considerate? Maybe it's also time for them to forgive and be forgiven. The another party to forgive and be forgiven. When we are moving into this new paradigm, do we Bring with us this package of this karmic relationship, karmic depths with us, or we walk into a new paradigm free. The taste of freedom, the complete freedom that none of us has ever tasted. And I think that is an invitation for us to think about this 
all this energy, which is very hard to digest, and we should all sit back and to look into the future with another perspectives, forgiveness is a form of liberation. If you would like to look at your chart with me, please visit my website, www.lotus.org. Thank you. I see you next time.